Thank you for coming, and thanks for being here today. If I can quit speaking before you quit listening, I'll be successful. I'm not going to bore you with science today. There's enough of that out there already. But I want to just uh, pay tribute to April. You know, we're here in, in uh, God's country in Montana. How about those grizzlies, right? <laughs> hey, there is nothing in nature more dangerous than a woman protecting her children. Be it a grizzly bear, a moose, an elk, take it from experience, I know. I've been in horse, I've been horse, horse racing, raising horses. The most mild-mannered mare in the world will turn into a raving maniac if you threaten her, her full. That's nature. And heaven help the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> Thank you, April. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this and, and uh, try and make it short and sweet and brief. We'll have plenty of time for your questions. We'll have question and answer afterward. I uh, need to have uh, the other mother, Ingra, I give her time. She's, she's led this battle and this fight for vaccinations for decades. You'll, you'll need to hear her. She's the expert. Okay. We, uh, we need to say just one thing, and this is basically, folks, a time for courage. We do, as uh, Georgia Boy said, we need to stand up and be counted. Now, to understand why this is a time for courage, you need to have some basics, some understandings, and that's what we're here, going to provide here today. The reason why I am here today, and the reason why I spent the whole time here this week, is for one reason, really, is to share information. That's it. I don't ask anybody to follow me. I don't have a following. I have no presence on the website. I have nothing to sell here today. I have information to share. That's it. And you know what? Do you want to believe it? That's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But know this. I have studied this issue for five years almost nonstop. It's become an obsession to me. So when you hear certain things said that we don't have... Uh, verifiable data, uh, I, I would challenge you to, uh, to take April's data and say that's not verifiable. Everything she said is more than verifiable. It's not popular, but it's verifiable. You know, we come here and uh, look out in this, this field, this dusty, dirty field, and here in this great state of Montana. You know, I, I think we're here for, for primarily one reason. I think we, all of us care deeply about what's happening in this country. We're meeting here to, I, I say, make a statement. I hope that people listening on this radio broadcast, the simulcast, will take this to heart. It's time to make a statement in this country that this government of ours is our servant not our master. That's what we have to say. Let me just uh, refresh some memories here. I'm sure you're, you're all aware of this, and I'm preaching to the choir, but let me just reiterate it, because you can't hear it enough too many times. I'm a big fan of, of our nation's founding document, the Declaration of Independence. I have it on my wall in my office. I read it. I try to read it every single day, if not every single week. I do this because I think it's an inspired document. When I read it, I feel moved inside my heart and my soul. 
You know what? Because it tells me that our basic human rights of freedom and liberty are not granted by a government. They're granted by a creator, a God. Amen. You know what? It goes even further than that. Our government seems to have given the rights of health to a, an unelected bureaucracy in Basel, Switzerland called the World Health Organization. The WHO has somehow been able to take control of the health and welfare of 194 member nations by treaty. This did not happen overnight. This happened systematically. It's an outgrowth of the United Nations and that whole corrupt individual group. Yeah. 194 member nations now that we've reached World Health Organization's subjective declaration of pandemic level six, 194 nations have said, we now will respond to you and your directives. There's something you're gonna hear a lot of in the next three months, folks. Hopefully not so much here in Montana, but the term terminology that's going around these 194 nations is called medical martial law. What does that mean? What is the most important thing we have that's vouchsafed by the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights? We can all list things like the right to bear arms, but I submit to you, it's our right and freedom to choose. To choose, to make the decisions for ourselves. The difference between a constitutional republic and a totalitarian socialist state is the freedom to choose. The choices will be made for you in a totalitarian state. You know, folks, this is why I'm against, rabidly against, this vaccination. Because they're taking away our freedom to choose. We don't have time to take this to the courts to have them rule whether it's constitutional or not, but use your brain. If something is forced onto you by a government decree, is that constitutional? So, Follow that logic through. Why do they want to do this? Let's lose, use logic. Everybody here listening to the sound of my voice today knows somebody who's chronically ill. Am I correct? Raise your hands if you don't know somebody that's chronically ill. Okay. There is no more ponderous ball and chain than a chronically ill disease, chronically ill person. They can't enjoy life to the fullest, and more importantly, a chronically ill person cannot fight for their rights. So, if you're sitting in a boardroom somewhere in the World Health Organization, Basel, Switzerland, Club of Rome, and you want to have the ultimate totalitarian socialist model put out on the world, wouldn't it make sense to make the people sick? Of course it does.